Hi, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about the depth tank header on uh, Engine Shop Joe. And we're going to look at the fault codes that are typical if you're having a problem with the depth header failing. And the depth header is the float assembly that goes in the top of your diesel exhaust fluid or depth tank. And that assembly is unitized for, for the most part. There's a few exceptions where the actual level sensor or float, you might want to call it, is uh, a separate piece. But for the most part, it's one big assembly. And in that, you've got two coolant ports and in and out. That's just a stainless tube that runs down through and back out and water supply to it. That water comes from an electronically controlled shutoff valve that the ECM can control. That valve has an arrow on it. If you change it, make sure that the arrow stays in the same direction or the direction of coolant flow. If you put that in backwards, then what will happen is it will allow coolant to go into the depth tank to heat the depth. It's for heating it, not for cooling it. And it will overheat it. And then you'll have faults for um, depth overheat. And you can't actually damage the electronics on the sensors, on the level sensor and the quality sensor. So make sure you keep an eye on that if you have to replace that valve. That valve is controlled by the ECM. On the uh, CM2250 system, it's controlled by the after treatment controller, which is usually bolted back by the depth tank up behind it or in the frame rail somewhere. On the 2350, that, that ECM after treatment controller module has been incorporated into the engine's ECM. So the engine's ECM will control that. Okay, uh, second, if the depth header fails, any part of it fails, it's going to shut the, the SCR system down and then you're going to start getting your, we're going to derate pretty soon, warnings. And that derate starts anywhere from an hour and two hours, you can be in a full D-rate. The time changes a little bit depending on the calibration. A lot of emergency vehicles like fire trucks or ambulances, uh, if they have the, the proper software calibration, which is considered emergency vehicle, they won't derate. Uh, the system will have, you'll have fault codes, but they won't derate. So let's take a look at a typical fault, scope, fault code screen if the depth tank is a uh, header's failing. And then let's take a look at uh, the actual wiring of the system. And we'll talk a little bit about uh, diagnosing it. Thanks for joining me on Engine Shop Joe. Here we go. Today we're going to be primarily concerned in this fault snapshot with 3868, 4677, and 4572. Those are your deaf header fault, faults, typical faults. The numbers could change a little if the engine platform or model changes. I'm talking about the fault code numbers on the left. But if you look under description, you're going to see fluid quality, fluid level, and fluid temperature. And if you see all those three in there and there's multiple counts, then most likely the module is starting to fail or you've got a problem where the power and or ground that feeds that module is failing. There's also a couple data wires because that is that is data bus down on, on 1939 bus. If the bus has a problem, typically you're going to see other items on the on, in the faults that are related to that bus and you'll see communication faults. Now here you see they're all abnormal update rate. And basically that means that the ECM is expecting a regular update from this module. It could be anywhere between uh, one, two, three, five times a second. Sometimes it's a couple every other second. I don't know, they call that polling. I don't know the polling. Uh, of the ECM to this module, but they do communicate back and forth. And when that communication doesn't take place, you'll see this abnormal 
update rate. There are some other faults in here. We're not going to worry about those today. We're just worried about this because this is what's causing our D rate. And you see the 6255 right above the tank D rates. And that is the uh, D rate that the driver is going to go, hey, I'm losing power. So let's take a look at the schematic and see how we would troubleshoot this to know if we need to replace that def header or there's another problem. Always check your wiring schematic for the engine that you're working on. Sometimes they do vary some. This is the schematic for the uh, engine that we're working on and that the faults that you saw just before this. Uh, this is an ISX 152350. And up at the top left, you've got the uh, aft treatment relay. It has a 10 amp fuse that, that sends it power to pin 30. That relay is turned on by the ignition switch. As long as the ignition switch is on, it is turned on. So it powers up right away. As the ECM is powering up, all the modules that are you see below that are related to the DEF system and the after treatment system are powered up with the ECM so that they all come online together. I can't tell you which ones power up quicker. I would imagine these small modules do, but I don't know that. So let's see what is powered up by that one relay. You've got the DEF tank header assembly, and that's what has the faults that we looked at. And that assembly in this case is, a, is one unit that controls or monitors level, temperature, and quality. Next, you've got inlet knock sensor, then outlet knock sensor, these are particulate filter temperature probe module, SCR system temperature probe module. Over on the right, you can see we've got the ground wire. So one ground wire that is basically tied together is the ground for all of these modules. And it is also the ground for the relay that got powered on. And then that ground goes up and tees into the battery ground to the ECM ground feed. So it's right back to the batteries. We've also got the green wires, which are data buses. The data bus tees into the VGT and then to the back to the ECM. It has a 120 ohm resistor here. The VGT motor has the other 120 ohm resistor built internally. And you can see up on the top the 120 ohm resistor, which is plugged in. It'll be just a, a gray cap. A lot of times that's tied up. It's most likely going to be painted red because all that wiring with this is engine wiring is put on when they build the engine and then they paint everything. Uh, some of the connectors you'll find are a real bugger to get apart the first time because the paint goes down inside the connector. It leaches in and basically glues them together with paint. So uh, first time uh, unplugging something, they can be a real bugger. You might think you don't have it totally unlocked, but you actually do. So this is the system that you would troubleshoot. When it comes to the depth tank header assembly, make sure you've got a good ground and a good power feed. Again, you need to load test the wires right at that plug. I'm going to be doing a video uh, coming up soon of a load tester that I purchased. It looks like it's uh, a, a good unit, and I'm going to do some examples of load testing with that. And uh, Cummins was always having us use that headlight, which pulls a couple amps to check all the wiring. And now they're showing the power probe. They call it a power probe in their, uh, in their troubleshooting documentation. So um, that's what we'll be looking at with that. So the DEF tank header assembly, if it's got a bunch of faults on it, and you check the wiring and the powering ground's good and there's no other data faults, most likely that unit has failed and will have to be replaced. And once you replace it, uh, you do need to read the procedure on replacing. A lot of times you need to drain the DEF tank completely and then key on start the engine, let it run for a minute or two, key off for a couple minutes while you fill the def tank to the top, and then key back on, start the engine, let it run for a couple minutes, and then key off for a couple minutes. 
And that's how the new float assembly in the def tank knows what is empty and what is full. If you don't follow that procedure, sometimes your def uh, level calibration can be a little bit off. I've had people call me up and go, hey, I put a new def float in here. And now when the tank's half full, it says it's full. So that's what happened when they did that. And then you have to, again, drain the tank, run it for a couple minutes, and then shut it off a couple minutes, fill it, go through that procedure again so that it learns the correct level in the tank. Thanks for joining me on Engine Shop Joe. See you soon.